So we've got different types uh, of commands here. So we've got turn left and turn right, which will basically make the robot turn left and turn right. But you'll see here that there's actually four parameters. Uh, looks like I'm missing a, a comma. I apologize about that. We'll see if I can uh, quickly uh, draw a comma in, even though it's yellow. We can just pretend that it's there. <laughs> Uh, so turn left and turn right, uh, four parameters this time. We now have quantity, unit type, but now we have turn type and speed. So quantity, unit type, and speed are exactly the same. So it's the amount, the, the types of units, but now we have a turn type, which is a different parameter, which is allows us to define what type of turn we want to make, whether it's a point turn or a swing turn. And these are two standard turns that we would have in, in our robots. And if we take a look here, our point turn is where we have one motor move forward and the other motor moves backwards. And then our swing turn is where we do kind of, it's also sometimes called a pivot turn as well, where we'd have our robot move forward and one wheel would stay stuck. So it would sort of pivot around that wheel. So point turn, it turns in place. Swing turn, it's pivot, pivoting on one wheel and moving forward on the other. The standard is the point turn, since most people enjoy point turns since the, the robot kind of stays in place. So the default parameter, if we go back a slide, uh, everything else is the same, still in rotation and still 50%, but now our point turn is, uh, is the default. So we'll always make a point turn if we just use the default parameter. So we'll jump ahead and we'll take a look here. We've got some different examples for turns. So if we just want to make a point, a, a, a turn left for a half of a rotation. Now remember, this isn't a rotation of the robot, but this is a rotation of the wheels. So you're still going to have to do a little bit of calculation, figuring out the size of your wheels and also how wide your robot is in order to make things like 90 degree turns. Um, but using the units that we have, such as rotations, you can do all of that math and then be able to program your robot to make a nice precise turn. So just using turn left, point 0 0.5, we'll have your robot make a left point turn for 0.5 rotations. Performing a right point turn for 180 degrees, so basically a right turn version of above, um, we'd say 180 degrees. Now if we wanted to make a left swing turn for two seconds, we would say turn left, two comma seconds comma swing. And then finally, if we wanted to use all of our parameters, we could have a right swing turn for 500 milliseconds at 75% speed, and you can see the code that is available there. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use this in our program. So I'm gonna switch over to my desktop, forward for 720 degrees, and then we might want to have our robot make a, well, if we look at my maze, I can put it on the left or right side, we'll put it on the left, so we'll wanna make a right-hand turn. So we'll say turn right. And now we'll say for quantity, we'll say we'll make a point 0 0.75 rotation. And we'll go for defaults. So we'll say just 0.75 rotations. And now here, what we'll do is we'll have our robot then we'll make that turn and then it's going to move backwards. And then finally, once it gets done, we'll go ahead and we'll add in a turn left, just so we can see all the different commands. And we'll have it turn left for 2.4 um, seconds. And we'll make a swing turn at 40% speed. So now you can see here that we're kind of slowly building up our, our program to try out all these different things. And one nice programming thing, especially as you start getting the longer programs, is that you can leave comments to yourself. So if I go ahead and put in two forward slashes, you'll see that those two forward slashes turn green. And uh, now what I can do is any text that I write on that line sort of going forward will not be sent to the robot, but it will stay on my program as a nice little reminder. So I'm gonna go ahead and just punch in uh, moving forward, just as a nice little reminder for myself. And then you can go through uh, and 
sort of add in your own reminders or comments or like why did I pick this value or you know what what is the reason for this specific line of code here and it's a way of just leaving yourself notes so that you don't get confused and you don't have to worry about um, you know forgetting things or having to write things down you can do all of your programming right inside of your robot so let's go ahead and we're gonna try our robot out so I'm going to send this over and now that our program's here we're going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to our other video now we're going to make our turn now we're going to move backwards and we've fallen off and now we're making a right hand turn now just remember that uh, <laughs> we'll run this again so that you can see it fully and I'll even take the USB cable off this time. So now we'll just run it right on right on the robot itself. Uh, so it's going to go ahead and run. Now it's going to make our turn. And uh, one thing to remember with the webcam is that uh, oh, and it got stuck. But it was trying to make our our, our various turns. Uh, just remember your directions might be a little bit backwards because it's mirrored on uh, the webcam kind of kind of mirrors it. Uh, but you can see that just by building all of these different commands in, we're able to have the robot sort of start going through and being able to work. And you can see it's very easy just to hit that check mark in order to run my program again. So let's go ahead and uh, any questions with the turning before we move on? So can the robot use a program that has coded in both natural language and the regular robot C language? Yeah, and so that's what's great is that you can actually, as you begin working in natural language, and you start realizing, hey, you know, these, these commands, they're great, but maybe my robot's a little more complex or maybe my robot's different. You can blend natural language and full robot C together. So there's no limitation. You can sort of slowly transition from one to the other without needing, you know, any sort of extra settings or anything like that. When hitting that natural language checkbox, it just kind of changes the look and feel of Robot C to hide a lot of the more advanced commands, but it doesn't disable them. You can still use them throughout your program as much as you would like.